It seems people are simping recently for Kate Blanchett, who is portraying a Icelandic composer in a movie called Tar. Apparently, the woman she's playing is the first ever female music director of a major German orchestra. But uh, the scene that they're simping over is Kate Blanchett who has a scene with what looks like some mixed breed. And, you know, he's basically engaging in identity politics dribble, you know, referring to uh, an older composer as a white male cis composer saying that that's just not his thing. You know, even though that's probably who his daddy is, because, again, this uh, actor looks like a mixed breed. And in response, you know, Kate Blanchett basically tear down everything that he said, you know, playing the whole identity politics stuff. And at the end, he calls her a bitch and walks off, you know, and and then people are applauding that. But again, this scene to me is just another example of them showing the public that they are very well aware of who they are and what they're doing when they engage in this identity politics BS. Because again, the whole point of this movie being made is to celebrate another strong power whammons. So I'm sure the whole point of this story was just to highlight a another female who's so strong and powerful and and plus i think she's like a a lesbian in this film as well and then you also have to remember kate blanchett is the same chick who reacted to elon musk owning twitter as something that's very dangerous in fact with her interview with variety she responded to elon musk uh, taking over twitter as quote it's dangerous That's all I have to say. It's very, very dangerous, end quote. So that's the statement from this chick. So please believe she's just putting on a performance. And in this performance, it's Hollywood pretty much acknowledging what they are engaging in. It's like with the Emily Blunt nonsense, talking about she despises the strong female lead label when clearly she's benefiting off of that first and foremost. And that stupid label comes from people like her, people within her industry. But of course, she'll never point the finger at those responsible for that label because she's ideologically aligned with those people. But to me, it just goes to show you (laughs) <laughs> how strong idol worship is even amongst people who claim to be so aware of this culture war and fighting against it because all they have to do is give these little bit bread crumbs of some sort of satisfaction and then people instantly flock and suck up whatever it is that they pull, uh, put out there because When I saw the clip online of her doing this scene, I said, oh, so they're just acknowledging the bullshit that they do with the identity politics nonsense, with the whole white male cisgender. And then they even have a eloquent response to that. But again, the plain the the point is they are very aware of what they're doing and how ridiculous it it is. But as far as they're concerned, it's a part of their crusade and it's effective. You know, playing identity politics is effective because especially based on recent elections, you see there's millions of people within this country that can still be sold on the BS, which is ID and ID politics, because again, most people are lazy and stupid, you know, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. 
you know, and, and playing victim and always seeking victimhood is just like a an instinctual reaction, I guess. You know, especially in a comfortable society that America specifically is. You know, and, and some people just feel as though if they're not going through some real hardship, they have to invent issues. They have to invent problems. You know, and that's what the Democrat Party and liberals in general serve. They serve people who want to invent issues and play victim. But um, anyway, I like the dialogue. She used clever uh, vocabulary words. <laughs> oh man! I mean, again, I, I just, I just don't care. Like, if if they start to make more movies like this with dialogue like that, I, I don't care because the fact is, ideologically, they're still pushing insidious bullshit, plain and simple. You know, Kate Blanchett referring to Elon Musk purchasing Twitter as very, very dangerous. She she did she didn't just say very, but two times dangerous with the very, very. That just goes to show you she was pro left wing censorship that existed on Twitter and she has an issue with free speech. And even if she doesn't have an issue with that she works in Hollywood so she will for the sake of her job and quite frankly a person like that is akin to a Nazi soldier who's just doing his job or to a or is akin to a CCP officer or soldier just doing his or her job but I'm sure she uh, ideologically aligns with uh, Hollywood. She doesn't have to be peer pressured into it. Uh, but anyway, this Tar movie is out there somewhere. I don't care to see it. And um, to me, again, this scene just shows that they're fully aware of what they're doing, and they're and they're fully aware of how retarded it is. But again, they're going to do it anyway because their followers are a bunch of dumbasses. And so if it works, it works. Even though they know it's BS because they're agents of chaos and that's how agents of chaos go. You know, they do something knowing that it's nutty, but they'll do it regardless because it waits, it works towards uh, their purpose. But uh, anyway, Kate, uh, Kate Blanchett, I mean, maybe she'll uh, get some alt writers defending her in the future just because of this bullshit scene that she had in this movie. 